Uh, yeah, on the well, just another way of asking the um, the jammer question: whether it's the U.S. Navy's next generation jammer or U.S. Marine Corps or the core component jammer, jammer for the U.S. Air Force. I mean, both of those would probably be considered a next war um, kind of uh, system or capability. <coughs> Um, and how do you, how do you, from a joint perspective, uh, fight for the budget, uh, especially for a new start kind of platform, in the in in this kind of environment? And is that still an issue? Do you think? Uh, that's a great question. And I'll tell you, I think it's the challenge that we have across EW is the fact of um, how do you advocate for EW development? You ultimately is it kind of we were talking with some folks at OSD yet, uh, last week and saying you know, kind of in general terms. She runs up and down the hallways, you know, to help make sure to pull all this together where it needs to be. That's one of the challenges UW currently has. Because again, that goes back to my answer earlier from an advocacy and proponency standpoint. Who advocates and who's a proponent inside uh, OSD and the Joint Staff for Electronic Warfare? That's, that's a very difficult question. We got asked that directly in the CBA. Kind of the answer we came back with was no one and everyone. So that's not a real good answer, and that's part of the problem. And, uh, and so I view that kind of as the task and we, we are looking to try and answer, or certainly to help make recommendations uh, uh, to, to the joint staff and the OSD to say, how should we do that? Clearly we've got some problems. I think we've all identified that. So clearly we've got some problems. Why do we have those problems? Well, I think part of it is, is proponency. Is, is we lack an organization that can do what you're saying, and saying, well, if I need a new start, who's advocating for that new start? Who's helping me? Because again, we're typically in a zero-sum game, as you all well know, uh, in today's uh, budgetary environment. So, if I want to have a new start, it's got to it's got to come from at the cost of another program. Well, who advises them to you know to say this is where we need a new start or where we need to shift resources and why? Uh, that's a very difficult problem right now uh, inside, particularly for electronic warfare, because again, it's so fragmented across the Joint Staff and across the DOD. Well, I, I think I've had this conversation with Congressman Pitts about this thing a couple of years ago. It was the same same thoughts, exact same words almost, you know. And, uh, and I think that was why this, he, you know, he started on the road to the CBA. But, I mean, is there a, so, I mean, is there a, a movement to, to establish that, either a czar, forgive the word, or assistant secretary or, or something like that? Um, there is. Uh, we've got tasking. Uh, to basically make recommendations back up, and, I, and I, we call it Gap One because it was the number one out of the uh, capabilities-based assessment. It was the number one gap was organizational leadership for electronic warfare. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning behind that was very simple: it doesn't matter what we saw without a long-term, durable organizational structure that understands its functionality. We're never going to solve the other 33 gaps. There's nobody there to maintain, prioritize, figure out how to be solve those. Uh, and so, from a juke standpoint, that's been one of our biggest challenges. You know, we're uh, our directors in 06. I'm a you know a GS15. You know, we certainly don't carry any weight in the beltway from a programmatic side. I think we carry a tremendous amount of weight from an advisory, operational relevance, and expertise. Uh, partly because we do provide that kind of service agnostic. We're, we're joint. We don't have, we don't own any program. Zero. I have no program dollars. None. Uh, and so that's helpful. The challenge becomes is how do we induce that into, into both the joint staff and OSD in an effective organizational construct that they can champion where causes need to be. And, and we are we are working on that now to provide kind of a again a service agnostic. Uh, operationally relevant, technical, capable answer to be able to do those those kinds of things. What's the we, we have time for two more questions. So you said there was 33 gaps in the CBA? 34. 34. Right. The first one was uh, leadership organization. So if you, if you can't solve number one, you're not going to solve the other three. And I would just like to dovetail one thing on there, just in terms of the role of the organization. Um, that is, the organization has historically gone on a long um, we, we've had to flow in terms of membership and what, what, what the overall goals were. But I would like to think that what the association truly represents, like I said, is government, the warfighter, and industry to be able to be that, that advocate that is able to go out there and also begin to support. So as the AOC is uh, very much in a position right now that we're, we're, we're making stronger stands to be that type of advocate, to be there to be, to 
make sure we're supporting the world fighters and make sure those issues are addressed. Um, and that is one of the key roles that the Kim Hill does address. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, I have to say, you still need somebody to develop, simply from the government side, to work the programmatics and go through all 